Last week, I reviewed the WeCreate Vision Pro, and using its 45 watt laser made some awesome builds, but that's not all this machine can do. In addition to the machine, I was sent to review this 2 watt IR attachment, which makes engraving on metals and plastic a breeze with professional results. In addition to plastics and metals, it can do a lot more, and today I'm going to everything, from leather patches to iPads and even my shop's MacBook. Let's get started. Switching out the laser is simple, but not extremely quick. You need to remove the screws in the back of the laser, unplug the cable from the machine, then do those steps in reverse with the new laser. Nothing complicated or hard, but it's not something you'll want to do multiple times a day. Once installed, boot up the machine and immediately we create software that recognizes the 2 watt IR and all the presets and settings reflect that. From the presets, it supports leather, real or synthetic, plastics such as acrylic, silicone or rubber such as Apple Watch straps, all sorts of metals including steel, copper, bronze, titanium and aluminum, and finally ceramic, carbon fiber and epoxy resin. The goal of this laser is to permanently mark, engrave things and not cut. As you'll soon see, I plan to start a side business engraving and making products with an online storefront and using the marketplace to my advantage. Subscribe to not miss that development, I'll be making videos about it and the Vision Pro will be a centerpiece of the operation. Now let's get engraving. And for the stuff that I also engraved with the diode laser, I'll show a comparison of the results and the first item I'm going to engrave is one of those. The bottle opener that comes in the sample materials kits of this machine. Right away I can see that the engraving is more visible and deep compared to the diode version. After all, the IR lasers are known to specialize in metals and plastics before all. But as you'll see, give different and interesting results on all materials. Here's a comparison between the diode one on the left and the IR one on the right. Both can do many tints of colors by changing the power, which is easy with the ink sample grids provided by WeCreate. Next, solving a real problem, I'm making a new metal for my dog Bella, a husky mix that thinks she's a wolf. The metal came out amazing, crisp and visible from really far. I won't show you the back as it's my phone number, but it came out great, crisp and deep in the engraving. I'm loving how permanent the engravings feel on the metal compared to the dial lasers where they feel like they just stain the surface. The difference is obvious. To my surprise, the IR lasers could do leather, so that's what we're gonna try next. I set up four different colored synthetic leather patches as I don't have any real leather and gave them all different designs at the same power settings and with the easy to use software was able to easily align and set this up to engrave in a single operation. Out of all the materials I found that this is the one that gave closer results to the diode laser. Almost identical, maybe a little more crisp but nothing major, both looking great. Again here is a comparison shot with the diode laser engravings on the left and the IR laser engravings on the right. For the next test and direct comparison, I'm going to engrave this acrylic. Comparing with the diode laser, this material is where the IR shines the most so far, with a crisp and precise engraving compared to the rougher and darker engraving of the diode laser. This is looking amazing and clear, just like a factory made item. There's no question here, for the acrylic, the IR laser is much better than the diode laser which cannot do anything like those results. The next thing I'm engraving is made of pure aluminum. And if you've been watching for a while, you might have seen that I made this tool myself with my CNC. If I were to sell those, engraving them with my branding would be a great idea. So let's try that now. Using the power at 100% and going slow, I get a nice gray engraving, low contrast but it's great looking. I bought a probe like this for $50 online before making this second one myself. So there's definitely a market to mass produce a few of them and get some sales going. 
This time I'm engraving an Apple Watch strap, the same one I engraved with my diode laser. The results are very similar, possibly a little more sharp on the IR, but both looking great. Another material where the IR made a massive difference is slate coasters. Similar to acrylic, I get a nice white crisp engraving that just pops up. Alright, now that I've been through those examples, it's time to try some real life items and one thing that's been bothering me is my spice jars. They're all stainless steel tops and have sharpie writings on them that fade off, erase and just look bad. I want to engrave the spice names on them and this is the perfect machine to do it in a single batch. I start by lining up all the caps like this with no particular order or precision needed. Within a few minutes, I had all the words set up and aligned as I wanted, and was ready to engrave. I did a test on a single cap, and I loved the result. So here goes the rest in one super efficient batch. After about 90 minutes, all was done. I had to go real slow to get a nice dark engraving. This is going to be awesome for finding spices easily. As you can see, I have many. Now let's get to engraving those prized items, my iPad and MacBook. For the MacBook, I've decided on two images that I've used in this video, the chimp and the wolf, which I find look really badass. I'm engraving them in two batches, with the default aluminum settings, but a little slower to get a nice and dark engraving. I love the result, but for the iPad, I decided to design something with the help of AI and Photoshop. I came up with this electronic design. After a few prompts and manually, I added my logo in the top left corner. I'm excited to engrave this on my darker midnight blue iPad. Right away, I knew this was going to look awesome. The engraving is coming out white instead of blending in with the color of the body. With this, the contrast is extremely nice and crisp. After a few hours, it was finally almost done and looking awesome. I'm very happy with the results. As you'll see soon, this kind of work will be part of my side business that I plan to start with the Vision Pro being the centerpiece of the operation. Even without this IR laser, the Vision Pro is a very capable machine. But as you can see, if you plan to engrave any plastics, metals or slate, the IR upgrade is a huge step up in results. I will be for sure swapping this IR head often, hopefully for successful sales in my side business. Subscribe and you'll hear more about it real soon. Thanks to WeCreate for sending me the Vision Pro and adding the IR laser so I could show you the differences and let you decide if this upgrade is for you. Check the description for links to everything as well as a coupon to save on a Vision Pro. Thanks for watching. I hope this video showed how much I enjoy working with this machine. I'm excited for what I'll make of it in the future. See you next time for more builds and shop time.